Mate, it's it's crazy. I'm I'm punching it to the chest. It's like punching a brick wall. That's the Unitry G1. And if you're anything like me, you've spent many hours watching it and its robot cousins perform on social media. Now I've come to the world's biggest tech conference to find out the truth behind the hype about robots. I've touched them. Hello. Can you talk? Spoken to them. Whoa. Danced with them. I've asked the biggest figures in tech when we can expect human-level robots. Yeah, yeah oh, this year. Yeah, this year. Now, I'm not the most brilliant entrepreneur and technologist of a generation. You know, yeah, I'm far from it. But it strikes me that while we may well get human-level robots very soon, we probably won't get those humanoid robots that we really need to be so helpful in our human world. There are still just so many challenges yet to resolve. And this is what they are. One, balance. So, back to the fight. I don't feel great about this, but humanity needed a champion, and I delivered. We have a Oh, let's yeah, go. Oh, wow. Okay. Hey! Humans win yeah. for now. Oh, sorry, yeah. Okay, of course, thanks. I can't oh, escape no, the no, truth. Thank you. It let me win. And then he was like, "I'm bored now. I'm just gonna lie down. Let this, let this stupid soft human win." <laughs> oh, I think maybe the robot won that one after all. Because honestly, my wrist is still sore. So interesting to reflect on that from a technical perspective, because. Honestly, I was amazed by its balance. I mean, yeah, sure, it reeled back when it was kicked, but I mean, wouldn't anyone? But did you notice what it missed? It didn't have any nimbleness or speed of movement. And I would guess that's because what it doesn't really have is balance under uncertainty. That is really hard to teach. Robots can train their AI brains by endless repetition and simulations. But balance needs body and brain working in harmony. What's really hard is uh, the combination of hardware and software. It's trained in simulations to overcome all these different obstacles, uh, like uneven grounds, slopes, and even stairs. Uh, but what's really hard is locomotion, how to uh, use the data trained in simulation and to map it onto the hardware. Just for the record, I am not fighting this guy. I retire undefeated. Two, dexterity. Let me present one of the great challenges of the robot age. Laundry folding. It's actually true, you know. This stuff might be easy for us, although, let's be honest, a massive hassle. Uh, but it's so hard for robots because of all the dexterity and the different fabrics and different surfaces involved. This is genuinely really impressive. The reason laundry folding is so hard is again because of the combination of brain and body required to do it. And even though AI now means robots can learn, it's not as efficient as human learning just yet. So to achieve that task, the robot needed a human to operate it for four days. So that's four days of teaching it how to fold laundry. Not fold laundry in, not fold laundry in general but fold laundry in that specific space with that table, which was slightly different from its normal table, and the lights, which were different from its normal lights. That is a big barrier to adoption of robotics. This technique of showing robots what to do is common, even for the most advanced robots, like Boston Dynamics' Atlas. What we did was right before we got here to CES, the team spent about a day physically teaching the robot how to do that task. So someone teleoperated the robot and embodied the robot, taught the robot how to move the roof racks for a few hours. We then take all that data, put it into a policy, an AI policy that runs on the robot, and the robot actually did that task autonomously. The guy in the blue isn't telling the robot what to do. He's correcting it if it goes wrong. What's it missing? Not the ability to do the motions, but to adjust continually on the fly. In other words, dexterity. Three, touch and feel. 
People say that technology correspondents aren't as brave as war correspondents, but I am going to let this robot grip my finger and hopefully it won't crush it. A little bit down. There we go. The trick is touch, or its robot equivalent. Your product is these little guys, right? Yes, so we make the touch -to sensors. We can integrate them into various robot hands and grippers. So in this case, there are 12 sensing points in each fingertip. Uh, each sensing point can measure three exit forces. So you also measure, you can measure, for example, weight of the object, slip of the object, and hardness of the object. And you can use all this information to adapt your grasp to the new object that you have never experienced before. Without touch, a robot handshake is a terrifying thing. <laughs> That's a firm handshake. <laughs> Even when it's actually being operated by a human with a motion sensor. But it takes more than touch to deliver a handshake. You need something I can best describe as feel. So it is very compliant and it can absorb the impact and even utilize, it can utilize the impact also. Ah, yeah. yeah. Normally robots are kind of like a human statue in a way. They're so stiff and they're just completely rigid. But this one, you'll see, I'm going to press it down, touch it really gently if you come in. It feels the push like my arm would. And so I'm kind of just moving it around. And the really interesting thing about this is that you'll see, look on this, no sensors here. This isn't being done with sensors. It's being done because the, um, the muscle, the robot muscle inside the actuator feels the force and responds accordingly. It's just a tiny thing, but this makes a big difference. The next step is to switch between softness and rigidity as quickly and smoothly as we do then it might get close to human touch and feel. Four, awareness. Let me show you what LiDAR looks like, which is a key sensor for robots as they attempt to replicate human vision, or actually go one better than human vision. So these are what, these are LiDAR cameras over here. And this is what they produce. This is called a, a, a point cloud. This is a medium range one. Over down here, you've got a, um, a close range one. And look, I'm going to wave in front of it, and you'll be able to see me. There I am, giving a little wave. Kind of beautiful, isn't it? And the great thing about this, with this, a robot can see in the dark. That is definitely one better than us. And here it is. This is a LiDAR scanner, and this tells you a lot about why robots really are improving so much. First time I saw one of these, it's about 10 years ago, size of a massive box and cost, I mean, well over $100,000. This is less than $1,000, small, it's robust, and more importantly, it's mass produced, so anyone can get hold of these. That is great news for developers, great news for robots. But sight, no matter how piercing, is not the same as awareness. This is Digit, which is currently loading and unloading machinery and other tasks in factories in the US. But notice what's missing in these pictures. That's right, humans. Check this out. So this thing has got these kind of eyes up here. These are for communication and telling people around it what's going on in its head. It's got eyes here too. These are the cameras and the depth sensors. And it's got eyes here for LiDAR sensing, for getting uh, a picture of the, what's in, in the world around it. All this just to do what we've got in here and in here. But before you feel too sorry for it, check this out. Down here, it's got its groin camera. So this is so that it can see when it's carrying something. And if you've ever carried something up some stairs, you know how useful this would be. Despite this, Digit's unreliable awareness means it's put into shutdown if it even goes near a human. The reason is because the same technology which lets Digit carry around a 30 or 50 pound tote can exert quite a lot of force onto a human if the human's in the wrong spot at the wrong time and Digit isn't able to perceive that. Senses like sight and touch tell you what's going on awareness tells you why it matters.
and that is hard. Yeah, I don't like to bully robots by taking away their toys, but have you noticed how it's still trying to grasp the ball, even though I've got it? So, what next? This is by no means a complete list of all the obstacles on the path to humanoid robots. I'm just trying to give you a sense of the scale of this grand challenge. Robots have come so far and are advancing amazingly quickly thanks to AI. But they still have a long way to go because humans are very hard to imitate. I want to show you a miracle of technology. Energy efficient, uh, precise yet powerful, and the intelligence, I mean, unbelievable. Oh, it's me. Yeah, I know, disappointing, isn't it? But nothing makes you appreciate the human body like dealing a lot with robots.